Hey AP Chemistry students, this is Mr. Hodgkins here with some tips for memorizing the polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are going to appear so commonly in the course that it's important that you memorize their names, formulas, and charges. You'll be tested on these within the first couple days of the school year. If you're not there already, please look in your, no your summer assignment notes uh, and find the page we're looking at now. There's a number of ways to approach this task, but I'd like to show you one that organizes the list of polyatomic ions you see on the previous page uh, into a number of different categories that will hopefully uh, help you to make sense of them and therefore make the memorization process easier. The first five polyatomic ions we're going to memorize uh, we'll call the big five. I recommend that you make a flashcard for each of these. These are going to be the foundation upon which all the rest are built. These five uh, polyatomic ions are five of the most common that we'll use this year. You'll notice that they all end in eight. Carbonate, chlorate, nitrate, sulfate, phosphate. Unfortunately, these polyatomic ions all end with a different number of oxygens. It would be nice, for example, if all the, uh, the chlorates, carbonates, nitrates, if they all ended in three oxygens or four oxygens, but there is a mix. So you are going to have to memorize which ones end in three oxygens, which one end in four, as well as what their individual charges are. A tip for doing this is called Slivka's Square. If, you, if we look on the periodic table, do you see this square here, this imaginary square uh, represented by silicon, sulfur, tellurium, and tin on the corners? What Slivka's square says is that any polyatomic ion made from a nonmetal outside of that square will have three oxygens on it, whereas any one within the square, for example, sulfur or phos uh, phosphorus, those will end in four. As you can see, sulfate has four, phosphate has four, but those elements outside of that square, carbon, chlorine, nitrate, have three. So that's just a tip for helping you to remember which have three and which have four. Once you've memorized the big five, we can memorize the next group of ions by analogy. These would be the halogens. If you recall from last year, the halogens are this group of elements here. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And you'll notice chlorate, ClO3, has the same exact formula as bromate and iodate. Or, in other words, any polyatomic ion made from bromine and iodine will have the exact same formula as those made from chlorine. Now let's extend our memorization beyond those five that end in eight. For the polyatomic ions, any polyatomic ion that ends in ite will always have one less oxygen than the, poly the same polyatomic ion ending in eight. So for example, here we have the chlorate that we memorized, ClO3, and then chlorite would be automatically ClO2. So if you've memorized the eight form of a polyatomic ion, you know automatically that the ite form will have one less oxygen. In addition, what's cool is that whether it's ite or ite, the charge will remain the same. So once you've memorized that chlorate, for example, has a negative one charge, you automatically know that chlorite has a negative one charge as well. So phosphate is PO4, phosphite would be PO3, sulfate is SO4, sulfite would be SO3, and so on and so forth. Furthermore, we have some prefixes that can be added to the name which will change their meaning as well. 
For example, the prefix hypo, if you put that in front of the ite form, it automatically makes the oxygens one less than the ite form. And if you put per in front of the eight form, for example, instead of chlorate, you put perchlorate, it means that there's one extra oxygen than the eight form. Um, a way to help remember this might be to remember that a hypodermic needle, hypo is that prefix that we use to mean one less. Hypodermic needles, as you know, go under the skin and the number of oxygens in something with hypo is one less than or under the ite that comes before it. How do you remember per? Well, maybe um, the term hyper. If I'm feeling hyper, I might, I'm overexcited. And hyper, that prefix per, means that there is uh, an extra oxygen or one over the eight form. The next group of polyatomics that we'll memorize we'll call ions by hydrogenation, or more specifically, ions that can be formed by adding a hydrogen to one of the already existing polyatomic ions. What we're really doing is not just adding hydrogen, but we're adding a hydrogen ion. Hydrogen is in the same group as lithium and sodium and you may know from last year that those elements form a plus one charge and commonly hydrogen forms a plus one charge as well. So take a look here, for example, at sulfate. Sulfate is one of the big five. You'll have started by memorizing those. You'll have it down pat, I'm sure, by now. And if you add a hydrogen to sulfate, it simply becomes hydrogen sulfate. You'll notice, however, that the charge of the hydrogen sulfate is one less. You can reason that because if you add an H plus to HSO4, you could expect that the charge would be diminished by one. Negative two plus one is negative one. So this is true for sulfate. Adding hydrogen makes it hydrogen sulfate. Carbonate makes it hydrogen carbonate. And phosphate, you can actually add two hydrogens to to make it hydrogen phosphate dropping the charge from negative three to negative two and then adding one more will make it dihydrogen phosphate di in chemistry is a common prefix used to represent two so that will drop the charge by one more let's pause for a minute if we add up all the polyatomic ions covered by these first four categories, you'll have memorized the vast majority of the polyatomic ions on the list on the previous page. However, there are some polyatomic ions that unfortunately don't fall neatly into the, one of these four main categories. We'll call those the little five. And probably the best way to memorize these would, just like the big five, would be to use flashcards as well. The first of the five categories of polyatomic ions in the little five are the polyatomic cations. And I've actually just listed one, there's only a couple, and the most common polyatomic cation, indeed the most polyatomic, one of the most common polyatomic ions in general is ammonium. We'll see it all the time. And what's interesting is that this is the only polyatomic ion that has a positive charge. So ammonium is NH4 plus one. When you see an ionic compound uh, with ammonium in it, it will be written first because it's traditional that the positive ions get written first and the negative ions get written second. So once again, this is the only polyatomic ion in an ionic compounds formula that you'll see first in the formula. The second category of the little five are a few ions that kind of buck the system. Most polyatomic ions are easily recognizable because they end in eight. In fact, if you're reading the name of an ionic compound, one of the ways that you can easily tell uh, 
that it contains a polyatomic ion is that it will end in eight or ite. So sodium uh, sulfate, sodium phosphate, lithium carbonate. Uh, as soon as you see that eight or ite ending in the name of an ionic compound, it tips you off that it contains a polyatomic ion. These, this uh, category of monatomic sounding anions are a little bit tricky. They, unlike all the rest, end in IDE. And so they can stay somewhat hidden in the name. Sodium hydroxide, lithium cyanide, hydrogen peroxide. It can be a little bit difficult to tell that in fact that formula contains a polyatomic ion. Once again, an important reason why we need to memorize them. So here they are. OH is hydroxide. When something contains OH, it's commonly a base or an alcohol. So this is an extremely important polyatomic ion. We're going to see it all the time this year. OH is uh, oxygen and hydrogen together in an ion, and it has a negative one charge. Cyanide, you can see here, is CN has a negative one charge again, and peroxide is when oxygen pairs up uh, and forms a polyatomic ion with a negative two charge. The third category of ions in the little five are pretty cool. These ions have a very characteristic and distinct color. Although you haven't seen them perhaps yet in, in this year, uh, during lab, during AP chemistry, We'll come across and use these polyatomic ions all the time. The first is permanganate. It has mang uh, ma mangan ma excuse me, manganese uh, combined with oxygen, four of them. Uh, chromium is combined with four oxygens to make chromate. And dichromate contains two chromiums combined with seven oxygens. Permanganate has uh, a beautiful, distinct, dark purple color. Chromate has a bright yellow color, and dichromate has an orange color. These uh, are really the only colored ions on the entire list. All the other ions are colorless and clear. Category number four of the little five are those polyatomic ions that are organic. Now, in chemistry, when we say organic, we don't mean uh, made without pesticides or the common use of organic in society. Organic in chemistry means it's a substance that contains carbon. And these polyatomic, common polyatomic ions, acetate and oxalate, both contain carbon. Uh, we have acetate, C2H3O2, and oxalate, C2O4. Finally, we have uh, the last category of the little five. We'll call them thioions. Uh, these two polyatomic ions aren't terribly common, uh, but they both end in, uh, they both start rather with thio, which is an indication that they contain sulfur. So if you know cyanate, which is CN, uh, you also now know, can know thiocyanate which is SCN. Thiosulfate is uh, S2O3. So that concludes uh, this video describing one strategy for memorizing the polyatomic ions. It's one that I use to memorize them. And again, it's not the only way to do it. You could, for example, simply make flashcards for the entire list and just bang it out. It would take you a little while, but um, you could do it that way. There's, I'm sure, other methods on the internet that you can find. But this one made sense to me. Maybe it'll make sense to you. And what's also valuable, too, using a strategy like this is once you um, memorize it, you know, in a month or two months or three months, your, your memory is going to weaken. And having this scaffolding upon which to memorize these can oftentimes help you to bring uh, the names and formulas and charges of these back into your head. So I hope this has been helpful and we'll see you soon.